What is going on, my Masketeers? Welcome back to another episode. And we are talking about House of the Dragon, episode three. Let's get straight into it. So we find that two years has passed since episode two. And essentially, Damon has been waging like his one-man Targaryen war against them sea crab pirate on the sea stones, or as I call them, the crabby patty men. And it ain't been going too well for your boy. He's been struggling out there. Even with the dragons, these guys keep on retreating into the caves. And supposedly, it's now come to a point of where if they don't get a from the capital they're gonna lose but you know Damon too much pride he ain't letting that go he ain't sending no help he's saying we gonna die on this goddamn shore before I even go to my brother Viserys and ask for aid back in King's Landing Viserys has literally had a son who's turning two and it's gonna be like his second um, naming day so they're throwing a whole ceremony for that so they're gonna go hunt they're gonna go celebrate as they do during all of that you got people in the council and even people talking to Otto saying that listen now that he has a son he needs to change who's going to be heir we know that previously he had given it to Rhaenyra but you know we are not gonna have a woman rule the seven kingdoms Uh uh-uh we're not doing that so you need to make sure that he changes that to Aegon Otto's in a tough situation because again he's handed a king but also that's his grandson and he's also trying to secure his whole situation and again this man stay plotting in it he stay plotting and he knows where the future is going in his mind the outcome is that the realm will never accept Rhaenyra or never is a queen over a king he against us to lay in the plans to slightly coerce and get Viserys to you know change his mind and again oh oh forever like the way this man does it yeah he really taps into like the core of a person he don't even come you know what he comes like a goddamn snake in the garden of Eden that's how all be moving because he comes and like he hits you where it hurt he comes and he will give you something that really makes you think damn you know what you're right you got my boy Viserys oh this man is this man is just getting finished he is literally on the losing end of every battle emotionally mentally physically <laughs> listen yeah this man is losing body parts he's down to eight digits because like he lost the two fingers before in episode two he had one finger that was rotten but now you're seeing that both his pinky and the finger that comes after the pinky like the ring finger that's gone both of them bad boys fell off rotten that to chop him off and i'm just like this man is literally falling apart and he's under so much pressure because again the realms are talking everyone's saying that now that you have a son it's looking like you might have to change that and even he's now thinking oh do I need to do that? Do I need to conform to society and to what the culture is saying? Even when he basically asks um, Rhaenyra to come out to the celebrate with them for her brother's second naming, obviously, reluctantly, she agrees. She comes out there. That's where we meet the first Lannister and like all Lannisters, man, just always up to a bag of shit. <laughs> <laughs> forever scheming man forever scheming he's just like the cocky arrogant Lannister and he wants Rhaenyra and even like his approach to her he offers her a little bit of wine says yo you guys got dragon pit but you've never seen Castle Rock and how high our towers are and if you come I can show you you can see all over the kingdom I can even build you a dragon pit and she's looking at him thinking build me a dragon pit the hell are you talking about and that's when she realizes what's happening that her father wanted her here partly to support but partly to kind of betroth her off to one of the other houses and yeah that don't go too well as you know Rhaenyra's spirited rebellious and nah she's not really for that so she takes off the thing which I found very interesting was that they talk about before the dragons came to Westeros the thing that was held as royalty or the symbol should I say was like a white stag which again it's very fitting because that's what the Baratheons they took the white stag because before the stag was the house of um um, Storm's End. I've forgotten which house it belonged to before the Baratheons who came with Aegon Targaryen back in the day like they took that house over and they even took like their sigil but yeah beforehand the White Stag was deemed as a symbol or the sign of nobility and that's what they were trying to hunt and even that's what the thing what Otto tried to give to Viserys when he was telling him that they've, they've spotted a, a White Stag and this is clear proof that it's a sign from the gods because a White Stag shows nobility and royalty and it happens to be here on your second son's name day so that's a sign you know from the gods take it how you want just planting those seeds i can't lie to you viserys was looking kind of <laughs> wayward this whole hunting trip he was back in the wine man because they were they were finishing his soul with all the politics and all the stuff
stuff that he has to do and this and that that at one point I literally thought he was about to get Robert Baratheon out here I really, I really thought that because he's been sipping on that juice he's going to fuck up during this hunt and he's going to get matched up he's going to get Robert in all over again and then a very interesting thing happens where he has a conversation with his wife like by the flame and he was basically saying that he had a vision that he saw a male Targaryen which was from his bloodline which he believed was him at first but he realised it was his son would basically like be the one like to, to rule and to do an amazing feat as king but now that like, everything is coming undone as he sees it and the fact that he's named Rhaenyra as his successor but she's a woman but now he has a son it's like he's conflicted and he's thinking to himself maybe maybe it's not it's not meant to be for her like maybe he made a mistake maybe him trying to make amends for the death of her mother he made that choice but it could be his son Aegon so he's conflicted I think the very interesting thing what happens I don't want to give too much away but like there's a point in the episode where essentially we have them finding a stag but it's not the white stag they kill it now Rhaenyra is literally in another part of the godswood and she comes across the white stag and like the white stag like comes up not real close to her but it comes in her vicinity they make eye contact they look at each other he just kind of bows his head and he just dips off and I thought that's like proper prophetic in the sense while everybody thinks that because she's a woman she isn't destined to rule the very thing that they said was from the gods which is the white stag it approached her but there was nobody there to see that and I thought that was like a really cool moment I can't lie I thought like that was like a really cool moment let me get into the good of the episode the episode like always hitting this episode here gave me everything that I wanted in Game of Thrones it gave me the political aspect it gave me the emotional trauma it gave me the weight of the choices that people make and how you can't really appease everybody and when you make one choice it will cause ripple effect in another place but most importantly I like the characterization of everybody you see where everybody is you understand their motivations and listen the person the MVP for me for this episode yeah it gotta be my guy Damon Damon hold it down this man I ride for him all the way because what happens is eventually Viserys decides to send aid because he comes to the realization that what is good for the kingdom is good for the kingdom his issue with Damon is one thing but if Damon should lose this war that he started without the king's permission it will be bad for King's Landing and the Seven Kingdoms as a whole so he decides to send aid now Damon receives the letter saying what is coming to help them this man just loses his shit beats up the man that brought the the letter or the royal parchment should I say and then he enacts one of the craziest dead devil plans and only Damon can do this where he essentially goes to the stronghold of these crabby patty pirates and essentially the problem is they keep on running into the caves the only way they can stop them and use their dragons properly is to draw them all out and then just burn everything and we can call it a day so Damon does the only thing that he can use himself as bait and let me just tell you what happens in that sequence god tier god tier now the one thing which I will say which I will say about this is yeah there was definitely a moment where I thought mm, this is looking a little bit he's looking a little bit invulnerable right now but don't get me wrong the action was sick but at the back of my mind I was thinking to myself okay cool but Damon should have been hit with a couple of arrows at this point Damon should have been hit with a couple of arrows at this point but he does get hit with the arrows but I thought like he went a bit too long being unscathed but he was out here cutting these men down let me not lie about that but at, at certain points I thought to myself raw these men are really gonna make him do a run dolo solo out here you know it's in the Targaryen blood man Jon Snow had a little run like that now Damon got a run like that so I liked it but at the same time I could kind of see where they kind of needed to you know just relax a little bit make it more make it more gritty in the sense of don't just let him run through everybody like let him struggle a little bit and they did but I thought it came a bit late but anyway that's like a little nitpick that for me so good along with everything else that I said previously so let's get into the bad again there's not really that much bad that's happening in this show it's very hard for me to find bad I can only say two things for me which I don't really I don't really like is one is the time too much time is passing in the space of these episodes between season I mean between episode one and episode two it was six months now between episode two and episode three it's two years and I'm thinking to myself whoa 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 slow down buddy slow down buddy a lot happens within two years especially in Game of Thrones listen people are here getting duppied up after two months because certain decisions within a week has made the whole situation turn left 
So the fact that so much time is passing here in between episodes, we don't get to see a lot of the backhanded politics and all of the quote unquote sneaking in the shadow that normally happens. For me, I would like to see that. They need to slow it down a little bit because they're moving as if they're only going to get one season, but they've already been hit up for season two. So please reduce it, reduce it a little bit and then just slow it down in terms of how much time is passing. My second thing, which I didn't like for the episode was again, it's not really something that's bad. It's just more of a nitpick. And like I said before, it was literally the whole situation with Damon being able to run through so many people before it felt like he was in any danger. I felt cool. That was nice. I liked it. But at the same time, please let me see why we love Game of Thrones. Anybody can get it. And if you put people in certain situations, they will die if they don't have a proper plan in place. And even though Damon had a plan, I felt a lot of things went a bit too well. I felt like he should have struggled a little bit more to get to that outcome. And then that also ties into like the final fight. The final fight, there is no final fight. You know, you don't even get to see what happens. You don't get to see that fight. And to me, I was like, no, give me the fight. Let me see what happened between the King Crab <laughs> and the Prince of Dragons. I want to see that. Let me see that. So those are like my two slash three things, which I wasn't really too happy about, like within the episode. With that being said, my verdict, man, this was a really good episode. Like I said, they keep on raising the stakes, but now it's now it's popping. It's really, it's drawing you in and it's giving you so much to work with. And so for me, I will give episode three, I'm giving this bad boy a nine out of 10, man. I'm giving it a nine out of 10 because it gave me everything that Game of Thrones should give. They had the political aspect. It's got the build up, also got the potential of how the fallout is going to occur. And the pieces are moving. <laughs> the pieces are moving right now. And I can't wait to see the end result. Guys, this is the part where I put some of you fine followers comments from my previous video. Take a look, see who made the cut. And like always, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you at the next masquerade. Peace.